I'm Tree, and this is Project Transparency. <coughs> the community calendar is basically comprised of me preparing for Definitely to Appear in September and cleaning my now only studio. This is my life now. Is there anything that y'all would like to see available at Definitely to Peer or on my Etsy shop? Just let me know in the comments. So there's this show that's going on at the Friedman Benda Gallery in Chelsea. And it's called the, the Duality of Existence Post Fukushima. And you know me, Elaine. A lot of my favorite contemporary artists are Japanese, or if they're not Japanese, they are highly influenced by super flat and, and or kawaii culture. Actually, if I'm being honest, I'm really influenced by super flat and kawaii culture. I think it's kind of a hazard of having grown up watching anime and reading manga. But I was reading about this show on Hyper Allergic because they do like gallery show reviews and I live in the middle of nowhere, as you all know, Lane. So finding a good gallery show is a little difficult unless you want to drive a really long time. And the article about the show was called Kitsch Mythology and Technology, Japanese Art in the West. And the author of the article contextualizes their interpretation of the gallery show via through something that Michio Hayashi had said about the perception of Japanese-ness and Japanese art in the West. That it's triangulated by kitsch hybridity, primordial nature, and technological sophistication. And that's the thing, Hayashi is completely correct, and he's completely correct that the West has this triangulation of Japanese-ness in art from those things. However, I kind of think that the author of the review was utilizing that triangulation in a way that a lot of Western critics often situate non-Western art because it doesn't fall into antiquated notions of Western art. And th these are notions that have led to a lot of us younger artists taking refuge in movements like pop surrealism. For some reason in the West, if the subject of the pieces are recognizable as something, as something from low culture, from popular culture, and I say low culture and pop popular culture with as much derision as these classist statements deserve. It's not worthy and it's not art. And yet the entire Western Renaissance is one giant fan art of the Christian Bible. I also think that strangely there's a lot of Eurocentrism that's going on in this gallery review. And the Eurocentrism is functioning as a way to reduce the duality of existence post Fukushima to merely kitsch hybridity, primordial nature, and technological sophistication. Don't get me wrong, those elements are definitely there. They're kind of the hallmark of non-normalized contemporary art since the 80s, and not just Japanese contemporary art. But this triangulation, this assertion, this reductionism erases and ignores the interactiveness of these pieces the criticism, the sheer intelligence that's going on, and locates them through this dismissiveness into a pastiche, a pastiche of conceptual art that's been corrupted by popular culture and is corrupting the art world through its non-abstracted, recognizable references. It also seems to be ignoring that these are essentially Web 2.0 pieces, that interactivity post-postmodernism where a piece deconstructs and then reconstructs with a new meaning in hypervalence, and the need for the audience to bring their own subtext to the show, to the art, and that these are vital components of the experience of these pieces especially when the only documentation that we're presented with in this article of the 
of the show are still stagnant static photographs when these are interactive environments, whether physically or virtually. I don't know, Lane. Tell me what you think. Anybody else watching this? The article is in the drawer. All pertinent information to this discussion is in the drawer. Tell me what you think. I have notes.